In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be with us, O Lord, as we lead this act of worship. Help us to bear in mind all those who will be watching and with us today. Help us to make it worthy of your name and to the glory of your kingdom. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Gonna walk into something. Right, where are you gonna sit? You're gonna sit over there. Right, okay, I'll come on this side then. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning, and here's a very warm and bright, sunny welcome to St Bartholomew's Church, part of the Parish of the Holy Trinity, East Ham. And it's lovely to be here with you today. My name's Anne Easter, and I'm accompanied this morning, I'm delighted to say, almost back from sick leave, by the Reverend Mother Sue Lucas, our team rector, and on the technology there, and you will hear his voice, is Father Marco Lopez. Now you'll know that today is Mothering Sunday, and I recognise that for some that's very difficult. But whether your mother is here on earth, or already in heaven, getting things organised up there with the angels and saints, no doubt, whether it was somebody else who mothered you, perhaps a grandmother or an auntie or a neighbour or perhaps a father. Because my mum was disabled, it was my dad who did quite a lot of the sort of teaching us to cook and that sort of thing that mums sometimes do. We also give thanks for our mother, the church, who nurtures us and feeds us and nourishes us and encourages us and I think particularly about mum, they know us very, very well indeed and yet still love us and protect us and will hear nothing said against us. Thank you very much. So, join with us on this happy day, Lent 4, but we won't pay too much attention to Lent at the moment. And we now come to our prayers. We've got an order of service which you will notice has got some interesting bits in about mothering and of course most of all we celebrate god our mother god the source of our life god the encourager supporter and sustainer of all creation grace mercy and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ be with you Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise, Praise God, God who, who cares. cares. Let us pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, Watch over us and hold us 
all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. A man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what had happened to him. The daughters of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. Hmm, this must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, um, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me and I'll give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. And when the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. And she named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clotus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. If you're at home, please do sit down. If, you, if you're here and helping me, also please sit down. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I think it's probably fair to say that Mothering Sunday this year is a particularly poignant occasion. One friend on Facebook is counting down the days until she can see her own mother after many months of phone and Zoom calls. Another friend celebrated her daughter's first birthday recently and there are people in the position of having not yet met new, new, new grandchildren or other young relatives, and that is very difficult. Of course, some are separated from parents in care homes, although those restrictions have just, in a very limited way, begun to be eased. 
and perhaps hardest of all. Some have been separated from mothers, fathers, grandparents, and tragically, even children in the last hours of their life during this terrible pandemic. And there is another poignancy, because Mothering Sunday last year was the 22nd of March, the last time we were able to be in church together with anything like normality before the first national lockdown was announced the day after. There are some resources for reflection on the anniversary of that day, and we will be sharing them during the course of this week. There are, though, signs of hope. Bishop Peter has written to all the clergy, that letter's now on the diocesan website, that we can, according to our local circumstances, and with appropriate caution and care, begin to consider reopening for public worship. I have begun discussions with the ministry team and today start that discussion with BART, BCC and later the Standing Committee and PCC. So it is possible that this year Mothering Sunday will be the last Sunday when we had to worship apart just as last Mothering Sunday was the last occasion we were able to worship together. And as we contemplate all of this, today's Gospel is very short and rather bittersweet. It is the image of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John, the beloved disciple, standing at the foot of the cross. It's the image of Mary as the Mater Dolorosa, the mother of grief, that has been shown in thousands of paintings down the years and in much music. And how appropriate it is to stand alongside Mary as we confront with sorrow and with honesty the many griefs of the past year. God never wills suffering. That is not compatible with the idea of God, our mother, who loves us. Nevertheless, personal suffering of the kind we have seen on such a huge scale this year is one of the great blocks to evangelism. How long, O oh Lord, how long? And we live with the wise. So in Mary, the mother of sorrow, standing at the foot of cross, we see an image that shows that suffering has a purpose. Like many this year, Mary was desolate and stricken with grief and anxiety about her beloved son and powerless to do anything to prevent what was happening to him. She is just there. And that is precisely what is so powerful about this image. It doesn't provide easy answers. She is just there, present in the place of suffering, in prayer. Like mother, we might say, like son. It's very well known that Mother Julian of Norwich refers to Jesus as our true mother, who bears us in the sorrow and pain of the cross for the joy of eternal life. What's less well known is that the same image is found in the earlier writings of St Anselm, who was Archbishop of Canterbury at the time of the Norman Conquest. He uses the wonderful image that Jesus himself uses in Matthew 23, of Jerusalem and his desire to gather its children to him, like a mother hen gathering her brood. It is an image that is beautiful, sad, and also very homespun. Like his own mother at the foot of the cross, Jesus is simply there. Jesus is simply there with us in prayer, 
in the place of our deepest sufferings, gathering us to him under his wings like that mother hen. God does not will suffering, but the suffering of the cross shows us that there are no lengths God will not go to, no depths God will not sink to, simply to be our true mother and to be with us, God's beloved brood. So perhaps, like Mary, all that we can do now is find the cross in our own lives and stand there and pray. And yet, and yet, and yet, one of the titles of Mary, who is the mother of sorrows, is also cause of our joy. One of the titles of Mothering Sunday is Letere Sunday, which means rejoice. That's why I'm wearing a rose pink star. And that, of course, is the promise of Mary's solidarity with us at the foot of the cross, of Jesus, our true mother's solidarity with us on the cross, that all suffering is redeemed in the joy of the resurrection. It's sometimes too easy to forget this, and it isn't cheap joy or forced rejoicing. It's still too easy sometimes to become an anxious church, to be worried about decline, about the impact of COVID, about perceived restructuring of our church, about congregational and clergy numbers. But the ultimate promise of the cross is the joy of resurrection, a joy anticipated in the sacramental life of the church. And this is our calling. Like Moses, we too are drawn out of the water. In our case, drawn out of the waters of baptism, given, if you like, new birth through the amniotic fluid of Jesus, our true mother, who bears us for sorrow and for joy. So as we wait in eager but patient and measured anticipation for the resumption of our worshipping life together, as we wait in eager anticipation for the joy of the resurrection, let us dare to answer our calling as those drawn out of the water of baptism. Let us dare to stand in the place of our own cross. Let us dare to stand in the place of suffering, not seeking easy answers, but living with the difficult questions. And dare to hope with Anselm that in Jesus, our true mother, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and your labour, we come forth in joy. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of love, security, and truth. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents and all who care for children. Strengthen those families living under stress. And may your love be known where no human love is found. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray that all may find in her their true home that the lonely, the marginalized, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, especially for Myanmar, for Cabo Delgado in northern Mozambique, for Yemen, for Palestine and Israel. We pray for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, accept the cries of our hearts as we offer you prayers. Through them transform us and all creation, until you are in all and through all. We ask these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise Praise God who cares. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sacrifice of praise. Peace be with you. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you've created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners and with a love stronger than death, opened wide his arms upon the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the... Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit, as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, may they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple for your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Albans, St Bartholomew, St Edmund, St Mary Magdalene, St Stephen and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you created us through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom 
with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father eternal, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Praise God who loves us. Praise, Praise God, God who cares. Loving God as a mother feeds her children at the breast. You feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise, Praise God, God who, who cares. cares. For the care of mothers, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For their patience when tested, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For their love when tired, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For their hope when despairing, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. For their service without limit, thanks, thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank, thank you, God, God, for the love, love of our mothers. Thank, thank you, God, for their care and concern. concern. Thank you, God, for the joys they have shared with us. Thank you, God, for the pains they have borne with us. Thank you, God, for all that they give us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to our notices, and um, I'm going to ask Mother Sue if she's got some things she'd like to tell us. I have the distinction of having given birth on Mothering Sunday. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> which, uh, yes, that's which is really wonderful. weird, isn't it? I was going it? to say, you've yes. got, I was going to say that, that's a lifetime's career in broadcasting, having impeccable timing. <laughs> well, I guess. But um, yes, it was Ben who was born on Mothering Sunday. So yeah. occasionally his birthday comes on, on it again. Yes. Yes. yes, but it was on Friday this year. Um, so uh, it's lovely to be back. Um, and thank you for, for all your good wishes, for your cards, for the flowers, um, for the chocolates, for the marmalade. Um, <laughs> it's very much appreciated and it really, really helps. So, so thank you very much indeed. Um, I am back, but I'm trying to be very disciplined about how much I do. Um, so, so watch this space, um, as they say. Uh, there is um, a DCC at St. Bart's at 11.30 on Zoom. Uh, the papers and the link were sent round, um, I'm sorry, a little bit late, um, but it's not a huge agenda. Um, and the standing committee is this Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, the PCC on the 23rd on Zoom. Uh, we have got the um, APM and APCM slated uh, for low Sunday. Um, however, um, it, it is actually rather possible that in-person meetings might resume the day after on the 12th of April. Um, so again, I'll talk to the ministry team and standing committee and PCC, and if that looks likely to be the case, then we might possibly delay the APCM a week um, so that we can actually meet in person, but, but watch this space. Um, speaking of which, today is the last day for any changes to the electoral roll. Uh, if you think there should be any changes, uh, contact the electoral roll officer in your church um, or, or, the, or the parish office, given how things are at the moment. And the Lent course um, resumes tomorrow on Zoom at 2 p.m. We're looking at Samuel Wells's book, A Cross in the Heart of God. Tomorrow, looking at the cross in the Old Testament, and that will uh, also be repeated on Wednesday um, at 7 p.m., on St. Mary Magdalene's YouTube. And I'd like to say a particular thank you to all my ministry team colleagues, but particularly to Marco and Anne, who have actually really kept things going here um, during my unexpected absence. So thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to hand back to Anne for the final blessing. Oh no, we have the adverts now. <laughs> um, so the first thing is we three are very fortunate because we've all had our first vaccinations. Now, when it comes to your turn, please, please, please have the chance 
take the chance and have the vaccination. Amen. It's really important, not just for you personally, but for those people that you meet with, your family, neighbours and friends. The more of us that have it, we're doing fantastically well here in Newham, there's no doubt about that, but we need to keep on and so that everybody's vaccinated. So please, when you get the chance, and if you need to talk to anybody, if you're a bit doubtful about it, if you're wondering what it feels like, well, we can tell you, very, just a little injection, you know, nothing, no big deal. Marco didn't even cry when <laughs> he had his. Um, so that was very good. But, you know, if you're worried about the philosophy of it, again, there's lots of opportunity for, to discuss that with people who really know what they're talking about. And you can look on the new website or just Google it and you can find lots of information there. Please don't bo believe the myths. You know, God's given us the scientists, God's given us the vaccine, God's given us the places to go to have the vaccine and the doctors and nurses who will give us that. So please, Amen. when you get the chance, take the jab. Secondly, the children have gone back to school. I understand that in Newham, the vast majority of children have gone back to school. I, I suspect with not a little thanksgiving on the part of the poor parents who've been desperately trying to work at the same time as keep order in the classroom. So um, a special thanks and remembrance today for our teachers and all the school staff in the schools in Newham. And finally, of course, if you want to laugh, if you want a bit of good news, the podcast, Oh My Goodness, O-H My Goodness, with Ali Jones and me. There'll be a new one out, all being well, on Tuesday, which we recorded yesterday. So um, it's free. You can subscribe, just press the button and um, listen to us having fun with the new... We've got a dog who was sick and a cat whose all four legs were broken. It's very sad, but it all, it all comes out well in the end, as you can imagine. So let us know any good news that you'd like to share, because normally we'd be sharing good news now. If you leave a message at the parish office or email one of us, we can say it and let everybody know your good news. I hope as time goes on we'll all share in the good news of being back together. That's the thing, isn't it? So. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise God who loves us. Praise, Praise God, God who cares. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless you. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.